Hi everyone, I'm Reading with Jack and today I'm here with a book review of The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This was the first book that I read in 2015 and it's actually the first book review that I've done in a long, long time. But finally I'm back and I'm going to start doing book reviews again. So first of all I'm going to start by talking about what the book is actually about and I'm actually going to read the inside flap. I feel like it explains stuff really well, better than I could explain myself. And it definitely has a great mood and a great tone, it sets everything up and really persuades you to read it. All children mythologize their birth. So begins the prologue of reclusive author Vida Winter's collection of stories, which are as famous for the mystery of the missing thirteenth tale as they are for the delight and enchantment of the twelve that do exist. The enigmatic Winter has spent six decades creating various outlandish life histories for herself, all of them inventions that have bought her fame and fortune but have kept her violent and tragic past a secret. Now old and ailing, she at last wants to tell the truth about her extraordinary life. She summons biographer Margaret Lear, a young woman with whom the secret of her own birth, hidden by those who loved her most, remains an ever-present pain. Struck by a curious parallel between Miss Winter's story and her own, Margaret takes on the commission. As Vida disinters the life she meant to bury for good, Margaret is mesmerised. It is a tale of gothic strangeness featuring the Angelfield family, including the beautiful and willful Isabel, the feral twins Adeline and Emmeline, a ghost, a governess and a devastating fire. So first of all everyone, I'm going to talk about the amazing, amazing characters, the characters, the characters, they were so good, and what I really loved about them was the development of them. They were so well developed and I could really tell that Diane Setterfield had spent ages and ages characterising these and planning them and thinking about their backstories. I felt like the way she presented them was really good. She really kind of added a few questions at the start of the novel. Some of them were gradually answered, but a lot of them were only answered at the very end. And I really like this kind of mystery behind the characters. Of course, I really connected with Margaret Leah and her love of books, her love of discovering stories and the truth behind everything. I just think she's a really easy character to connect with, a really easy character to relate to, for anyone who loves reading. And then I felt like with Vida Winter she had a very dark and enigmatic past which was so mysterious and so different. She really was quite unique and a character that really struck me actually. I feel like she's a character that's going to stick with me for a long long time because she's just so different to any other character that I've ever read about before and at times she was actually quite scary. So now let's talk about the plot which was full of plot twists and turns. Seriously a lot of them and I loved it. I felt like this really kept me on the edge of my seat. I was completely shocked by some of the things and wondering what was going to happen next and how the plot development was going to happen. It was just so amazing and I really felt mesmerised and engrossed in the story. Particularly in the first half, I was completely grabbed into this world and interested in the characters and the plot that was already happening. It started straight away. I actually feel like the first few chapters were some of the best first chapters that I've ever read because they were just amazing. They were really captured something, something completely different that I really appreciated. I also felt like the first half had a lot of bookishness in it. There were so many bookish references and bookish discussions about books and the importance of reading and writing, so this really enhanced the plot as well. However, I have to say that the second half wasn't as good. It actually started to become a little bit inconsistent and sometimes there was a lot of intensity but then it kind of went and then it came again and it went, so it was kind of all over the place. It was still very enjoyable but I felt like I wasn't always as interested in every single chapter as I was in the first half. Because the first half of the book was so good, I almost feel like it makes the second half of the book seem worse than it actually is, if that makes sense, but I still think it was enjoyable, which is definitely the main thing. I also felt like towards the end the plot really started to pick up again, which was really fantastic. I really felt engrossed into it, and I felt like the ending was very satisfying. I also have to say, in terms of the plot with the novel overall, I love the parts that were inspired by Jane Eyre. They were amazing. As a lover of Jane Eyre, I just think it was fantastic to see how how Jane Eyre had influenced Diane Setterfield and the plot that she was creating, but at the same time it didn't feel forced or contrived. The references to Jane Eyre were very much necessary for the plot and I really enjoyed that. So now let's talk about the writing in this book, and the writing is so vivid and descriptive, it's full of mood and horror and tone, it's got a really gothic feel to it. The way that Setterfield described the characters was on point throughout, it was so vivid and descriptive, I really managed to connect with them and imagine what they were like, and equally the descriptions of the bookish settings were fantastic. I mean, obviously writing about books and writing about places like bookshops is obviously going to be very fun for a writer, and this excitement really came through when Diane Setterfield was writing. I really got her passion and love of books. Also, I 
have to point out Diane Setterfield's bookishness. She really could not hold back from talking about books and writing and I loved that. I had a lot of post-it notes that I stuck into this book because the quotes were just fantastic. They were really important and meaningful and I really loved the fact that they supported readers and really encouraged people to read. And I should probably read the quotes out at some point. Maybe I could do another video for that. And I feel like it was just amazing. Bookish, really passionate about books and really quite fantastic. So overall for The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I feel like this is an understandable rating given the fact that the second half wasn't as good as the first half. Actually the first half could have probably been 4.5 out of 5 or even a 5. It was so good, but then the second half kind of let it down a bit so I feel like 4 out of 5 is a suitable rating because I loved it, it was really enjoyable, amazing characters, an amazing description, really fantastic, so bookish, and it's definitely one that I would recommend to anyone who loves reading. So everyone, that is it for today's book review. I hope you found it interesting and maybe want to read this book. Please tell me if you're planning to read it, or equal if you've read it before, tell me what you thought of it. And until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all again in my next video.